Hello everybody, this is Budrich and this is a new video, I call it i3 menu extreme Rofi menus and I want to show you the latest addition to uh, i3s which you can find here at bug labs, you know github.com slash bug labs you have a package or repository called i3s and I have just added these, uh, this uh, latest addition here is i3 menu, which is a little script that adds more features to Rofi when it's used inside i3wm. If you click this link, it will bring you to the wiki page of i3 menu, which is the same content as the man page for i3 menu. So let's show you a little bit some of the features. Open wiki, we have done that. Pipe a list to menu. Yeah, let's start by doing this. Let's first create a list here. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, oops, let's do a new line there. And we get a list here, one, two, three. You can pipe this, of course, to Rofi. We, I have shown you this in many videos uh, by using the D menu flag in Rofi. And then you will have a Rofi menu here. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you could also pipe this to D menu. If you have that installed, and then you will get a D menu uh, here. Um, but you can also pipe it now to my script here, i3 menu. And that will display a list uh, by default at the uh, top of your screen, X position 0, Y position 0. And the width will be the same as the width of the screen. Uh, and the height of the menu is the same as the height of uh, the title bars of your window. Now my, my uh, track point here is, is more or less dying, so I have to use this trackpad, which is... Bit disgusting whatever this is the height of, of the title bar you know um, and by default here it doesn't look like anything special you can select an item here and it will print that to standard output uh, one thing we can notice is that we don't have a prompt in this menu uh, which is different from example Rofi which always displays a prompt and if you don't specify a prompt at the command line it will display some default font here, the, the name of the mode, for the, which is D menu here in this instance. But with i3 menu, if you would enter a prompt, let's do hello, it would include that in the menu. And the menu uh, can be thought of having three main elements. You have the prompt, you have the entry box where you write text, you know, filter, uh, and then you have the list. One, two, three here, that's the list. You can um, force uh, this, uh, these items by using include here. And then one or more of three letters. And those letters are prompt, P, entry, box, E, and then list, L. So this will, inc th this will display the same thing, a full, full menu with a prompt, entry, box, and list. But you could, if you wanted to, remove, for instance, the prompt here. Now it will only display entry box and list. And you could even um, uh, just use the list and then it will only have the list or even only the entry box if you wanted that for, for some reason. Whatever. Um, okay, let's see what we have. Pipe list menu, done that. Add prompt, we've done that. Include PEL, layout window. Yeah, let's get to the cool things, um, which are i3 specific. Let's use the list here. There is one option in i3 menu that's called layout, and it can take uh, four different arguments, kind of. Uh, one of them is window, and if you Add this, then the menu will display over the active window. And this also works for floating windows. So if we would uh, copy this uh, line here and paste it into a floating window, uh, there, now we have the menu here overlaying the, uh, the window. That is kind of cool. You can also, if you don't want the, uh, uh, see there, let's do this. 
if you want to uh, specify a, a different window, not not the active window, you can you can hard code a target like this target, and then uh, this is uh, SXIV for instance, this uh, image here. So I could do uh, target uh, class SXIV. And now the menu will overlay SXIV, and even if uh, we change size of the window, it will. You see, it's kind of cool, kind of cool. So, window, target, yeah. You can also, uh, there are other layouts than window, for instance, uh, tab. That will instead display the menu overlaying the tab of the, the target window. And here you can see, now it displays this, because that's the tab. Now my polybar is overlaying the tabs, but here you can see that SX, SXIV is uh, just one one of the containers of, of uh, uh, yeah there are two tabs whatever uh, and you can change the orientation because when you uh, lay out tab we get a horizontal menu by default here if we wanted to we could specify orientation vertical and now we'll get a menu at the tab position but uh, with a vertical layout instead Pretty cool. Mm, there is another layout that I call mouse, and it will display the menu at the mouse position. Now it will look a bit weird here. Uh, it's 100% wide because that's the default width of a of a i3 menu here. Um, it's 100%. Uh, but if you specify like a layout tab, then the width will be uh, same as the tab and so on. But uh, when we add mouse here, it will just uh, use a default width, which is 100% and I don't think you would like that. So you can just uh, specify a width here, let's say 250 pixels. And now it will display the menu here at the mouse position with 250 pixels wide. Uh, that is nice. <coughs> you can also... Uh, Add the, the, the Rofi modes and stuff, you know, with show, uh, uh, Rofi show D run, for instance, is, is a command you can use. You can you can use that with uh, i3 menu too, by using the show option and then D run here. I, I notice also I removed the list because we don't need it here. Now it will show the D run menu here at the mouse position. But another thing that the default height of the menu is uh, uh, calculated depending on, on the number of items. And the, the D-Run menu, it have a lot of, of uh, items or elements inside of it, so it's, you could uh, hard code a height value to, to force that. Let's say 450. Now you can see at the mouse position, uh, 450 height with, with our Run menu things here. Notice also that uh, the menu, it will not, it, it would expand outside of the screen, but it would adjust the position if, if, if that would happen. Same with if you are like here and do it, this will happen. Uh, okay, customization. You can use uh, different themes. For instance, if we specify theme red, now we have a red menu. And there are some other built-in themes, dark. And these themes, they are uh, automatically installed into your home directory. Go to .config, and here you can find uh, a directory somewhere that's called i3 menu, containing a directory called themes, and here we have those uh, theme files that you can use. And you could very easily create your own theme file. Uh, for instance, if we open red here, this is how it looks like. You can copy this content, and create a new uh, file here, let's call it blue.rasi, you could call it whatever you want, you know. We'll paste that in here, and now you can see we have a blue file in, in, in the same directory. And if I just change uh, some, some variables here, um, to blue, and now if we run this uh, theme and use blue instead, now we get a blue menu. Pretty cool. 
Uh, and this uh, this might look like a weird syntax with the at symbol here, but that is actually Rofi themes uh, way. Uh, the, the, these are uh, proper uh, Rofi Rasi files. I recommend uh, you you t take a look in the man page Rofi dash theme which describes everything you need to know on how to customize themes and, and create your own themes and stuff and, and about these variables and things like that. Uh, and these variables, they are uh, located, uh, if you go up in, in the directory tree here to, uh, from themes, you find a directory called base, uh, which contains of uh, two files here, uh, i3 menu, which is like the base theme. Here, here you can set padding and things like that, but theme bars, that's basically just a, a, a file here with um, variable definitions. And here we can see this uh, blue color, for instance, that we used for, for the menu now. Uh, it's defined, whoops. Uh, here, you know. And if we wanted to, we could change this value here um, to uh, like a, a stupid blue. Now the menu have that blue. And we could also define our own variables in this theme bars file here. Uh, just uh, my bar colon, and then we can specify our own color here. Classic test color, uh, and then. Uh, open the blue theme here again and uh, what did we call it my my bar save and now it uses my bar as a background color here so it, so it's very easy to, to man, uh, manipulate the colors and i have um, made it like this so it will work well with uh, you know my my theme generator mondo you can just create a, a a template out of this file and, and sh so it will s change the theme theme colors here when you switch uh, theme whatever right right custom bar we have done that yeah I, I, I thought let's let's show you a polybar button demo because everyone loves uh, the polybar right uh, and first I should tell you that you should visit this page uh, which is Polybar wiki here, uh, where it describes how to create a, a, a simple label uh, text text module in, in Polybar. And what that means, I have already created some here, but let's uh, yeah, let, let's remove this click left here. Ah, I can see I've had had them in my Polybar all, all the time. You see, I have button one here. That is this text here. It's just uh, some label. One. So now it will say label one. I will not go into any details about how polybar works. Just watch my polybar videos, and, and this should be uh, easy for you to to add. And I, I use this dumb button and dumb button two here. If we wanted to add an action here, so we can click this to display, for instance, our uh, D menu run menu here. Let's just copy this whole uh, command. Just do this, click, left, equal, our command. Now, save this. Now I can click label one here, and it will display our menu. But you can see it's positioned a bit weird. Uh, the, the menu is spawned at the top left corner where the mouse uh, cursor is, and it overlays the, the bar and stuff. Uh, you can do things like, um, Whoops, whoops, let's go up here. You can do things like this. You can force uh, the, the Y position of, of the menu, for instance, to let's say 33 pixels. Now, when I click here, it will always display the menu at 33 pixels. No matter uh, the Y position of, of my mouse, it will always display at the same Y position. Could do the same for the X position if you wanted to, you know, uh, and do like do 55. And that will display it at 55 pixels from the left side of the screen, no matter where you click here. But maybe uh, that's overkill. Um, 
another thing. Um, it spawned from the uh, left, yeah, you see here, from the left corner of, of the mouse cursor, kind of. You can, uh, there, there's one option that's called anchor. Uh, if we set this to instead uh, 2, now the menu will be uh, positioned centered under the cursor. So very easy way to, to create like a start menu. Let, let's do that just, just because start and then move this to modules left here. No, uh, uh, windows, uh. <laughs> whatever. Um, and you could have uh, like, uh, if you wanted to, a menu for, for button two here, for instance. Now it will have the exact same menu for both of these. So button two will also spawn the start menu. Uh, what let's say you wanted a different menu or uh, maybe at least a different theme here. You could do this, and now button two will have a have a red menu, and button one have a pink menu. And of course, you could have different content in in the menus and stuff like that. Okay, last thing I want to show you is uh, um, yeah a sort option kind of thing that you can add. Let's do this. There, now it is like this. Um, let's add the list again here. Echo E, but with some more alpha, beta, one, two, Then um, remove this show D run. Let's see how this. Yeah, now we get this menu of, of um, five elements here. We can. <clears throat> and let's also change the theme here because that pink color is really annoying. There's one option that's called top. And top, it takes a list as an argument. If we just specify one word here, two, for instance, you will see. Now you can see two is uh, the first element of the list, then the normal list, and two is removed from, from its original position. You can add multiple elements to this list by uh, specifying them each on, on its own line. So uh, here I will use print f, uh, but you could also cat the file and whatever, you know, just as long as each top element is here, whatever, you get it. And then let's do two again, uh, and then the next element could be uh, one, and the next could be blue, and next could be beta. Uh, now it looks like this. Two is at the top of the list, one comes uh, second, and then blue, we specified it in the top uh, list there, but since blue doesn't exist in the original list, it's just ignored. Uh, and then beta is moved to the top of the list, and alpha and three have, have their original positions. Uh, except, yeah, you, you get it. This is really nice to, to be able to filter the list and, and uh, sort the list in this way. Then you can create like a favorites file or something and or save uh, uh, history of your menus and things like that. I hope you can find uh, use for this i3 menu and I'm sure we will make uh, several videos where we create some small uh, menu applications using this uh, in the future. I say... Um, Thank you for watching and of course you can just follow the instructions uh, on i3as repo on how to install this. Uh, it's uh, no big deal. Uh, either you install it from AUR if you have ARC or you just clone this repo and do a make install. Whatever. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.